This is Twit. So the IRS, and they've kind of backtracked a little bit on this, but I don't think the backtrack is real. I, it's a little confusing. The, yes. I, I, I've seen on the site even, if you go to irs.gov, they say coming this summer, if you want to, there's certain things they want to extra security, right? So they've caught, this is the troubling thing. They've contracted with a third party, a company a lot of states are working with called ID.com. Me, the states are doing it to try to eliminate fraud in uh, things like um, COVID loans and, uh, and you know, uh, unemployment. And ID.me is a, a way of authenticating yourself. Okay, so there's the kind of the synopsis. Tell me, Stacey, what you think of this story. Well, originally I was like, what the what? Because at first it sounded like the IRS was going to make all of us upload our biometric information. And I was like, this is a bad plan. Um for so many reasons, right? What could and now it's coming in. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then now they're saying, no, you can still pay your taxes and do things. It's going to be a little bit more onerous, but you, you can still not use this. But in totally separate news, and I'm still trying to figure out what the heck ID Me is actually using. So they're saying they're not using uh, facial recognition. But they are, and this is this is where I'm like, this is why we're talking so about this because I am like two still trying to figure out things they could be doing <laughs> with the IRS. You know, they're saying you take a selfie, and sometimes they want it to be moving, by the way, so it's not just a picture of a picture. So a selfie, hi, it's me, and we will use that picture of you to verify that it's you. But then they were accused. That's called one to one face face recognition, right? But then they were mm -hmm. accused of doing something that is much more disturbing, which is called one to many face matching steps, which means uh, it's the kind of thing that um, Clearview AI was using, where I take a picture of Stacy and then I try to match it in a database of many people. And that's a lot more uh, concerning because it's not then just about authentication. You're being added to a large database. They, it's so in his LinkedIn post, Blake Hall, who uh, the CEO is of ID, the CEO says he made it clear as mud. We avoid disclosing methods we use to stop identity theft and organized crime because it jeopardizes their effectiveness. Okay, criminals are constantly adapting. He's got a lot of excuses. ID.me uses a specific one-to-many check on selfies tied to government programs targeted by organized crime to prevent prolific identity thieves. In other words, they're going to match your picture against a database. It's almost like going to the police department and looking through the mug sheet to see if you're a member of organized crime. He says, this step is internal to ID.me and does not involve any external or government database. It occurs once during enrollment and exist to make sure a single attacker is not registering multiple identities. That kind of makes sense. The one-to-one -one would not register that. It wouldn't know if you've done well, this 12 times. This step is not... Here's his, here's his out. This step is not tied to identity verification. It does not block legitimate users from verifying their identity, nor is it used for any other purpose than to prevent identity theft. Data so sh shows that like, removing oh. this control would immediately lead to significant identity theft and organized crime. The one-to-one -one face match step is the only step we use to verify identity. <laughs> but he's, it sounds to me like he's also saying, but we're also going to do the one-to-many. So it sounds, here's what I'm wondering, because like Brian Krebs went through the process to register his face. Um, and he said, so as part of that, there was a, a person who actually registered. So that's the one-to-one. -one. And now Brian Krebs has his IRS ID me profile. Right. What I'm guessing is if Brian Krebs were a fraudster and tried to do it again under the name of Pete Johnson, Pete Johnson, when he went to try to do this, that would be a one-to-one, -one, but they would have to check the face of Pete Johnson against their one to many database. Right. And they would recognize that Pete Johnson is also Brian Krebs. Right. That's what I'm hoping they're trying to say. I think that's what they are saying. I don't, yeah. Which is okay. That's, 
that's not terrible. But that means every single... So this is my problem. Every single time I set up an ID.me account, which I'm going to need to log into the IRS for certain things like paying your taxes or getting your refund. Well, you don't have to. That's what they, the IRS has said, that you don't have to. But you're going to be more so convenient to sure. This is con it confusing. It will be more convenient. Unless they've changed your policy. Because here's the page Brian Krebs publishes. If you have an existing IRS username, please create a new ID.me account as soon as possible. You won't be able to log in with your existing IRS name and password starting summer 2022. Now, maybe they've so, changed that. Gizmodo's story has an editor's note saying that you can still file and pay taxes without logging into an IRS account or providing biometric data, which contradicts information an IRS spokesperson previously provided. Um, <laughs> they also pointed out that this was a really frustrating correction. Um if you go down to... I think the thing is, pay taxes, fine. If you're going to give us money, fine. You want to claim a refund, you're going to need to use ID.me. There are, I think this is weasel words. There are some things you don't need uh, to yeah. use ID.me for, but there are also some things you must use ID.me for. So my problem, there are a couple. One is, it's a third party. It's not, it's a, I guess, I mean, but... They're going to have a lot of face recognition information because with a one-to-many system, they have to store everybody's face. With a one-to-one -one system, they don't. With a one-to-many, they have to store everybody's face. That means they're going to have a database of every single person mm. who logs into the IRS but using the system. ID.me has that, not yes. the IRS. No, and ID. well, that's but my ID problem. Okay, well, no, 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 no. I get it, I get it. But ID.me ID me already has this database because, well, already has many people in the database. Doesn't that mean until I, those yeah, services. right, yeah. Well, until you get your, okay, so your issue is you don't want to- They used to, by the way, IRS database. used to use Equifax to do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. So, so that oh, was a gosh. problem. They got rid of that <laughs> because, and here's the problem. Why did they get rid of Equifax? Because they had a massive data breach. Breach. <clears throat> So now they got ID me. And a data breach here would be 10 times worse because it wouldn't just be your social security number. It'd be your social security number and your face. And you're right. Like it's un, it's still unclear if the IRS, I think what's happening is there's a lot of backlash and the IRS is suddenly like, uh, I don't know if we can force everybody. I mean, because you have to pay your taxes. You can't. I mean, basically, you're well, legally no, now. No, that's why they're saying you can pay your state. taxes without it. They never implied that you couldn't pay your taxes. It's if you want to. There's some things that you have to do it for, and so. Well, so what is a good system for can, verified identity? Well, this is the problem. Do. This is a good system. <sighs> Ideally, you would have. I mean, would you make the underlying security aspects of it not open source, but like? I mean, yes, you need a database of faces and information if you're going to use faces for security. Right? Krebs, Krebs looked uh, at their security and he said, you know, they do all the security in depth stuff, blah, 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 blah. So maybe it is secure. Here's the real problem. Um, there are you can't change your face, really, or fingerprints. When you're giving people biometrics, you're giving them something permanent. Even a social security number can be changed. But when you give them biometrics, that's it. It's over. And if that if that leaks out... That becomes and if it's used as a an, basis, an unfixable for transaction. Problem. Yeah, it's an unfixable problem. Right. The, the, the problem is that well, it's not the data breach. Everything is breached. The problem is using bad structures for transactions, and 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 then that's the problem. It's like the social security number wasn't supposed to be used for everything, right? But it became used for everything. So what yeah. if the face ends well, up being used for every banking thing, and then it gets misused? And, and that's there, where the problem. There's a further the issue end. because. ID.me looks like they've not been fully transparent on this. At first they say, oh, no, it's one-to-one. -one. And they say, but we have to use one-to-many. Oh, now we're not going to tell you because we don't got crooks to know. And um, this is what uh, Caitlin Seeley George, who's campaign director for Fight for the Future, <laughs> says. We already know this company is willing to say anything in order to get more government contracts. The CEO of ID.me has been peddling erroneous numbers about unemployment benefit fraud. But the fact that the IRS knew about this discrepancy is a big problem. The only responsible thing for the IRS and any other state or federal agency using ID.me to do is to stop these contracts immediately. Um, 
So well, there's some, I don't, that's I, the, the part of the problem. The liar is like, well, here's my, here's my big worry and issue. And we're already getting there. But if you have a government entity, sure, this is the kind of services side of the government, but having a database of your face and all the relevant information about you in that it becomes centralized, that can be used across I, my worry is it could be used across all government agencies to find you or to like it technically, I guess it already can be. And we're already seeing that with like the nationwide ID programs, but understanding who has access to your face data and all the personally identifiable information associated that with that and what they can use that for. Can they use it for tracking you if you haven't paid a parking ticket using right. like city cameras? Right. Um, can they sell that to a private company to track like what stores you go in? I mean, like my concern is this is really rich, valuable data. And I want to see really hard rules about how it's stored, secured, and then limited in use. Okay, but Stacey, it's not going to be secure. It's it's some, There's going to be a breach. So then the next question becomes, oh, then, then, like, you're right everything you said. Yeah. The next question it's is, what? if it is breached, what could be done with it? What else would depend upon the same data that could then be misused? Well, I, right? I think, I mean, I actually don't think being breached is the worst case scenario. I think the worst case scenario is the government has given all this valuable data to a private company who could then turn around and sell that data to, <coughs> I don't know, somebody who, like, makes traffic cameras and then you suddenly have like or parking lot cameras. So you know where Stacy Higginbotham is based on camera data, wherever I am in my day, for example. And I mean, it's kind of like location data from, from phones, which we might talk about later because mm -hmm. there's a lawsuit about that. Th that's more my concern. I mean, yes, it probably will get breached, but yeah. Yeah, and, and will the government's database, would that be any more secure than ID.me? Um, I mean, I think a lot of this comes... No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of the problem is, yeah. Who, who are you going to... This is, I mean, I don't... We I'd keep assembling all this valuable stuff and we're like, yeah, we know oh. that security is not 100%, but hey, let's take all of our gold oh. and stick it someplace right, right. here. <laughs> Throw the government a bone. They may secure it. I mean, we just had the whole um, COVID testing site go up that was hosted by the government that didn't crash as soon as we launched it. So maybe there's hope on security, too. Well, and, you know, the the, the government may already have your photo because they, they use DMV photos. They do. So, oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. That, they started that with... They started now taking your DMV photos and creating the nationwide database. Remember, right. initially it was statewide, and then several states signed up to participate. Twenty-one in states, and now six hundred forty-one yeah. million driver's license and ID photos from twenty-one states went to federal law enforcement databases, and then we were really shared have with other one hundred and thirty million people. Yeah, why do we have so many driver's licenses? <laughs> That's a good point. There's more driver's licenses than there are people. Uh, I don't That's know. That's not right. This is Consumer Reports. <laughs> I trust them. I don't know. Federal agencies. Okay, sorry. No, I'm just like, wait, we don't have that population. Thanks for the sanity check. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, how many pictures have you had taken over the years? A lot. About uh, 2016, the Center on Privacy and Technology reported about half of all American adult faces are already in police facial recognition <laughs> databases. So maybe this, maybe it's silly to worry about this because this, this ship has sailed. Federal. Well, then Bureau we have of, to figure out rules for how they can use that. In you know, FBI uses uh, DMV photos. Uh, mm -hmm. ICE uses uh, DMV photos. Uh, I mean, it's not. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and actually, th this is an article in the Consumer Reports from three years ago. But they even address this thing about the difference between a phone face ID on a phone, which is one to one, and one to many. Uh, when we do f what we do on a phone is authentication. We're simply comparing two face images. But when law enforcement is searching for a person of interest, the system has to search against a large database of millions or even a hundred million. Photos and that 
introduces this problem, the accuracy of facial recognition goes down as the size of a database increases. That's one of the concerns about using it for criminal law enforcement uh, is it's not, you know, and we've seen this, people going to jail in, uh, incorrectly because they were identified in a digital lineup. So anyway, yeah, it's a, I'm glad you brought it up because that, that is exactly one of the topics I wanted to talk about. And I don't know what I think. I want, I mean, we certainly want it to be more secure. Maybe the government already yep. does have all those photos anyway. So, but should this third party ID.me be able, allowed to collect all well, how of How much these fraud is there now? What, what's the problem they're trying to solve? Big, with apparently, the a big, according to, I, well, and this is the other thing ID.me's CEO says, oh, it's big. Big problem. We, we, we're, here, we're just here to solve. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's a lot of fraud for um, parents committing tax fraud against their kids. So yeah. they actually like, mm -hmm. but this wouldn't solve that because if you're the first person to authenticate is like if I authenticated as my daughter, for example, then I become the canonical image for her. ID.me ID. has said there's been massive unemployment benefit fraud. They say 30% of states have uh, seen... There's, what, what, is the, what is the number they said? Ooh, Washington lost like a billion dollars yeah. in ID. Many states, this is from last year, are seeing a 30% fraud rate, according to ID.me. <laughs> um, and of course, this is self-serving information. And that's one of the things um, that she was referring to uh, when she said that he's been, you know, kind of misleading about this information. Um, we did get a lot of fraud. I, I mean, there is, there was a lot of unemployment insurance fraud, but I don't know how much IRS fraud versus unemployment. ID. Fraud. Me IRS is big. says $400 billion in pandemic unemployment fraud. Un well, unproven. Adam, that's that's another case. Yeah, well, that's a that's another <sighs> case. Un unproven, but now that's the kind of stuff the states are using them for. Uh, that we that was at least number a number he gave Axios. But... Yeah, four hundred billion dollars is a lot of money by cyber criminal gangs. And then that number, by the way, then parroted by the. Uh, top Republican on the House Ways and Means Committee, Kevin Brady. Yeah. So it suddenly becomes, uh, you know, truth. Oh, Oregon paid only $24 million in fraudulent unemployment benefits during the pandemic. The total so. amount of government payouts was $800 billion. So they're saying half of that money was fraudulent. It seems like a large number. California says $20 billion. Twenty billion is what they paid out in fraud. Mm -hmm. Fraudulent unemployment payments okay. during the pandemic. Eleven percent of what it paid out overall. Yeah, Not we had six hundred and fifty million. Yeah. In Washington, so that's yeah. a lot. <laughs> mm. Hall, Hall, by the way, uh, says uh, to this day it's accurate, according to Bloomberg Business Week. He said it's confirmed in patterns the data company the data the company has gathered through its work for California, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, and twenty two other states. He says, if state agencies are reporting far lower levels of fraud publicly, well, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He says, this is the largest cyber attack in terms of fraud in American history. Okay. And that's, that's what's giving some people a little bit of uh, qualms about ID.me. Yeah. Are that's they overstating this to, to get this government contract? Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. I know, but we don't know. We See, don't that's, know. That's marketing, right? That's sales. ID.me began 12 years ago as Troop Swap, a Craigslist knockoff for the military community. <laughs> that's a pivot. <laughs> then they ah. turned it into a Groupon style <laughs> discount service. Then they realized the real asset of Troop Swap was the software, which allowed veterans to prove their eligibility without presenting documents bearing social security numbers. They, they said, hmm, hmm. Um, Hall and Thompson, both ex-military, but neither of whom had a tech background, saw an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I always, anybody who does a lot of deals with the government, I'm always like, mm, you're sketch. 
The yeah. Obama administration, yeah. this is all from Bloomberg Business Week. The Obama administration had announced the national strategy for trusted identities in cyberspace, a push to get private sector companies to develop ID verification technologies. The troop swap team bought the ID.me domain, rebranded, and won a $2.6 million grant from the Commerce Department's National Institutes of Standards and Technology. Anyway, there's more to this. This is a deeper story. I'm sure we'll be reading more of this. It's interesting.